Now in conclusion, I really hope you see that the Bible is an amazing book. It's not just a book, it's God's book. The more you know it, the more you know the God who wrote it. And that there is a context to the Bible. And of course it's application, but there's a historical context in which it was written. Because it is a theological book written in a historical context. A book about God, from God, to His people, for us. Again, written within that historical context, which applies to us today absolutely completely. It um, gives us a Christian worldview or a biblical worldview. You know what a worldview is? Here's what a worldview is. Your view of the world. It's how you look at the world. Everything in life. Circumstances, family, friends, job, money, um, spiritual growth, everything. It's how we look at things in life. Everybody's got a worldview. The question is, do we have a biblical worldview or just one that we've thought up in our own imaginations? The Bible also tells us how to think, what to think, how to live and helps us see circumstances through God's eyes rather than vice versa. Because you know what? I've got a problem. I have a tendency to see God through my circumstances rather than seeing my circumstances through God's perspective. Now, how do I get His perspective? His Word. By the illumination of His Spirit. And of course, good teachers are involved in that as well. But we can know we can understand, we can love, and we can defend the truth in a world of lies. Do you believe we live in a world of lies? We do. Turn on the media, any media, television, internet, blogs, anything. We do live in a world of lies where things are tainted and twisted and tweaked and all this other stuff. I'm not talking about just opinion, I'm talking about flat out lies where somebody says his or her side and doesn't include the other side or anything like that. Because we, we listen to the God of this age, Satan himself. We get tripped up, we stumble, we fall, and we listen to those lies. And we believe those lies. And we make wrong decisions and wreck our lives and the lives of other people. But knowing Scripture, understanding who God is, protects us from that world of lies. It insulates us. Also, we see that God has always and only had one plan of redemption. Now, there's a lot of confusion. Some say, well, God saved people by law in the Old Testament and by grace in the New Testament. No, 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 no. There has always been grace. We talked about that in creation. It's always been by grace through faith and what God says in the Messiah. Because he has always only had one plan of redemption or salvation. The Old Covenant or the Old Testament came from God and it foreshadowed what Messiah would do. Born of a woman, born under the law, Galatians 4.4, to save both Jew and Gentile. Also, too, we find out that the world is wrong. How so? Let me tell you. The world says that all religions are the same on the major issues and they just differ on the minor issues. One of those lies I was telling you about a few minutes ago. Big fat lie. Now, the only thing the world religions have in common and the world philosophies and the cults is you have to work for your salvation. That's the only thing they have in common. Because if you look at their doctrine, their teachings, you find out on the major stuff they disagree, but on, of course, the minor stuff they agree. Of course, they say be nice to people, love, your, you know, love others, uh, do good things, do this, do that. You know. But on the issues of God, salvation, heaven, hell, sin, humanity, they all differ give you a few examples. Hinduism has hundreds of millions of gods. Buddhism is basically atheistic, even though they're related, because Buddhism came out of Hinduism. Um, Islam says God is singularly one and only one. Christianity says God is one, yet he has revealed himself as a triune being, three persons. Can we fully explain that? No, we can't. But there's a big difference. Uh, Mormons say you can become a god. That's not what the Bible says. So there's many other examples that could be given. So again, all world religions are not the same. The only similarity they have is the world religions, that is the world, world created religions, say you have to work for your salvation. Whereas biblical Christianity says it's by grace through faith 
in Christ alone based upon what God says. Because truth says all religions are different and that's what the truth is. Again, there is only one way of salvation, His grace through faith in the finished sacrificial life, death, and physical resurrection of Jesus, the God-man. So I do have to ask this now. Have you turned from your sin and turned to Jesus Christ as the only way, the only hope you have of salvation? Do you realize you've broken God's law? Have you ever taken the Lord's name in vain? Have you ever mistreated your parents? Have you ever told a lie? Have you ever stole anything? Hmm. Everyone has to say yes. We've all broken God's law. Therefore, we are all under condemnation because we've broken His law. But in His grace, He's provided the salvation that we need in Christ. Because God's standard is perfection. You can't say, well, and I only sinned once. You know, I just told a white lie. No. A lie is a lie. Sin is sin. God hates all sin. And to be in His presence, we must be holy. But we cannot be holy in ourselves. Say, well, I can work for my salvation. How much works are necessary? Tell me. How much work do you have to do to be saved? A little bit more? A little bit more? What happens if you fail? What happens if you sin? Oh, no, got to start over again. God is holy and perfect. His standard is perfection. You cannot measure it. I cannot measure it. None of us can measure up to it at all. But Christ, the God-man, the Son of God, God the Son, came to earth, took upon human flesh, died for us in our place, our rightful place. It should have been us on the cross. It should have been me. It should have been you. Because the Father laid on Him all of our sins, all of our iniquities, Isaiah 53. And it's only through Him we can have salvation. So have you repented? Have you turned from your sin and put your faith unabashedly, wholeheartedly in Christ alone for salvation? If you say yes, is there evidence of that in your life? I'm not saying, well, something I did five years ago, ten years ago, last year. I'm saying, what about now? Is there evidence of your profession as a Christian in your life? I'm not just talking about going to church. I'm not talking about just giving. I mean, do you have the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience. Do you love people? Do you love fellowshipping with other believers? Do you love reading God's Word? Do you love praying? Do you love singing to Him and praising Him? Do you love thanking Him and bowing before Him? Does your heart break when you sin? Read 1 John. There's some very serious tests about people who profess to be Christians in there. It's doctrine and practice. They both go together. Scripturally speaking, they both go together. So again, have you turned from your sin and turned to Jesus, the Creator, the Savior? Because He is the Creator, the one who was expected, then declared, and then explained, and the one who is coming again to consummate His kingdom. He is the one who the Bible speaks of in five words. Creation, expectation, declaration, explanation, and consummation. I pray this has been helpful for you, that it's a useful tool for you, that it has encouraged you and challenged you and made you think and made you appreciate God's Word even more. So may the Lord bless you and keep you, make His face shine upon you, and give you peace for His glory and His kingdom. In Jesus' name.